I'm here to talk about yeah sketching as Jock said. Uh, our community uh, is wonderful. It's very creative. And it's always willing to push the boundaries of what we do. This uh, creates amazing labs, but it also sets the bar of creating labs really, really high. The bar. And that's a big problem for designers and producers, um, especially for new ones, but also for experienced designers. How do you make a lab after you've done Capo or Estelle Medak? or delirium or just a loving. How do you do better or go further? How do we get people to make more laps without the fear of not reaching the bar? Um, and how do we make people make laps uh, where they don't have to make one better than the last one they did? And there's various approaches. Uh, designer Klaus Oster, who's here tonight, uh, he has one approach where he uh, suggests to lower the bar, but not aiming for the perfect setting or reworking the characters multiple times to get perfect characters. He aims for a model where there's more people who dare to make labs. Klaus has also made a really excellent project called the One-on-One, -on -one, where he takes lapers uh, who wants to design, and then he helps them make a lap. And uh, he had a project over Christmas uh, for four weeks. He took three LARPers, made them to designers, and also they created three new LARPs. So creating environments where it's possible to make LARPs, where, where you get a lot of help, is a great model uh, and it has great results. And we've seen that in the Phoenix project in Bergen and we've seen it at the LARP factory in Oslo, Trondheim and other places as well. Yeah. Um, but I, I do not want to lower the bar. Um, I could work with Klaus, that would be fun. Um, we've done that before. Uh, but I believe there's another way. There's a way where you do not have to lower the bar, it leaves room for failure and improvement. Where the players can have an Im amazing experience and the desi designers do not have to work countless hours for a year or more to make a lot. It's a method used in many other fields, but not really in lab, and, and it was pointed out to me by artist Brody Conan, which I've had the privilege of working with uh, several times, and he said, one of the first questions he asked me is that, why in the lab community do you not sketch? Um, there it is. Sketching is a way of trying out elements of lab design and see if they work. By calling it a sketch, you gain the alibi or the permission from yourself uh, that you are allowed to make the not perfect lap. You can even tell your players that there's a chance that, that your idea will fail. And this gives a lot of freedom to make a more daring design and the payoff as a designer is great. I did a sketch, uh, a great example of a sketch is the lap pan I did. Uh, with uh, fellow designer Linda Ulby. And uh, Pan is a horror lab about five couples in experimental couples therapy for a weekend in a cottage. During the weekend, they do a seance and get in contact with the great god Pan. From here on, it's a sliding slope into madness, and the lab ends by players stepping into the realm of Pan and leaving our world. These are some of the players and characters. When we got the idea that we want to make Pan, we of course quickly realized we had never made a horror lab before. <laughs> uh, I asked around to see if there was other horror labs out there from the last 10, 20 years, and uh, we quickly realized that most of the horror labs had not been that successful, or they've been very big productions, and we didn't want to go into a big production. So we set a series of obstructions or challenges to fo focus us not to end up doing that perfect lab. And these are some of the uh, obstructions. Maximum of three months production from start to finish. Maximum of 20 hours spent on design, including written characters. Player number decided by location size. And location decided by the budget. Total transparency of everything. Assume that your players are adults and will say no. And the designers are also players on equal terms. 
And the last one was in for, for Linda and me because we realized we haven't played for a long, long time and we also want to play the LARP. And that's, also also that's always a conundrum when you design LARPs that you want to participate but you can't. So how do you fix that? So we try to put that in as an obstacle. This, of course, has consequences. Um, many of the design issues that we had were solved or decided by the obstructions. We could not have monsters because there was no room and no budget. We couldn't have long character descriptions because we didn't have time to write them. And we couldn't have a big special effect ending. Again, no time and no money. So what did we do? Well, we decided that the characters were the monsters. We introduced a possession model where the god Pan could possess the characters. This was done by a necklace that showed which character was possessed. And the god Pan could then travel from person to person by players passing the necklace around. All of the players were instructed in how Pan was when, when they p he possessed them. And basically it boils down to more of everything and always escalate. And since there was no time to produce original characters, we, we decided to use an already existing group of characters, and that's the 12 Olympians of the Greek pantheon. So we took the aspects of the Greek gods and reshaped them into contemporary human beings. Each character description was about half a page, and we then cast players that we believe could pull that character off. We also uh, asked people to sign up in, in pairs, and we only gave players that one pre-existing pre relationship in the lab. We did so because we then knew that that interaction between them would work and we hoped that that will make everything else in the lab work since that key element is working. Concerning the ending, since we had no budget but the, the location we had had a swimming pool, we said, instructed the players to, after the last seance, they would go into the pool, dive under the water and when the player couldn't hold their breath anymore, they would pop up and the lab would end. The lab was quite successful, uh, but a very important question to ask is that, wha <coughs> that was the success because of good design or because of great players? I'm not sure that I'm the right to answer that question, but I think though that the players, they could play anything and still make it work. Uh, but we had some successes and failures and, and I would like to share some of them. It's possible to pull off a quality lab in a very short time. Even if we spent more than the set 20 hours in design, I still think it was success. We spent a total of 35 hours together designing the lab. The horror elements in the lab did not work as intended. It was more of scary. It's not as scary. It was more like creepy feeling than and not all out terror that we were hoping for. But now uh, we have experience in designing horror and we know where to go. The next time. And another thing we learned is, do not make a physical possession scene with nudity and flailing of arms on a table with experienced lamps, exp expensive lamps hanging over it. They will break and there will be blood. <laughs> so what can you take away, away from this? Um, even though you want your next lab to be your magnum opus, make a small, quickly produced lab, it could be the first sketch of a later masterpiece. And even if it's not, you will have learned something. And even though you think your big idea cannot be tested in a small lab, you can test parts of your idea. And you'll be more knowledgeable on how to move forward. And one of the design goals was that we played on, uh, played as e on equal terms. That did not work out too well because we still need to make sure the lab ran, so, uh, ran smoothly. So my humble... Uh, uh, yeah... I would really love you to make more labs, so I can play in them. Even though the lab did not end up as we, we envisioned, it was still pretty good, and several of the players said it was one of the best ones they have played. We still don't know how to make a proper horror lab, uh, but I think we know which way to go, and uh, we're just going to keep on sketching. Thank you.